Digital technology is transforming how we live and quickly. In 2004, just 46% of adults in the U.S. used the Internet. At the end of last year, 82% were surfing the net. And social media is connecting people like we never imagined just a few years ago. Computers, smartphones, laptops, tablets, and Wi-Fi are changing the way we communicate, the way we learn, and how we see the world. I don't go anywhere without my phone. I do everything on my laptop and my computer. Um, I, I mean, I, I couldn't even get anywhere without my phone because I use my maps function, so it takes me everywhere. I can't even find my way around the city without my phone, so. Danielle Davis is 26. She doesn't need a television and doesn't own one. 31-year-old Alan Baker doesn't have a TV either. I remember when I was growing up, we used to watch the Today Show to kind of get an idea of what was happening in the world, and that's just not part of my day anymore. Uh, I check news on the go. Uh, all of my entertainment and news comes uh, via, the, via the Internet, and so I don't have television service. I have an Apple TV where I stream Netflix and Hulu Plus, and it even has a Wall Street Journal app built into that. Uh, and so all of my news comes from the Internet now. According to the Pew Internet and American Life Project, 88% of American adults have cell phones, 46% are smartphone users, and 65% of adult Internet users have social media accounts. Okay. Facebook is because just I, one I way like Steve Hahn connects, connects with people on his smartphone. I think I, I probably text and email more than I actually talk on the phone, so it's changed the way that I communicate digitally. Like many of us, Han usually has a smartphone and a laptop with him. And those devices are portals to everywhere. He is constantly communicating with his work, family, and friends. I have three email accounts with a VIP right here as well. That's for people that I want to, you know, if somebody's emailing me, that goes to my VIP, so I want to get back with them right away. At this internet cafe, Luke Roller looks like a college student dressed casually in cut off jeans. He is actually a medical software trainer from Dallas who's doing work in Tulsa. Luke's company doesn't have a physical address, so internet cafes and hotel rooms become mobile offices for him and his colleagues. I was able to attend a meeting this morning, and I'm interacting with all of my colleagues all the way from Lincoln, Nebraska to Dallas, Texas, and staying in touch with everyone and not missing a beat with what's going on in the company, uh, which is terrific. It seems almost every company or organization has a Facebook or Twitter account. Take local news like the NBC affiliate KJRH in Tulsa. When tornadoes spun around their viewing area last week, KJRH was not only giving warnings live on TV, but also on the station's social media sites. Aaron McCullough leads a staff of four whose only job is to maintain their digital presence. McCullough and his staff work nonstop through the night. We got a ton of people that just thanked us for doing that, and we got a bunch of emails that came in saying thank you for doing that because they did lose power, and that's how they were able to keep in touch and see what was going on. The station has a special weather app for smartphones. Hazardous weather. Temperatures will fall to near or just below freezing tonight across much of northeast Oklahoma with areas of frost developing. Impacts. Sensitive outdoor plants may be killed. The National Weather Service alerts and warnings can be customized for specific locations. In essence, we'll save you on battery power and we'll save you on sleep because then you're not going to be woke up in the middle of the night if the storm's not going to affect one of the locations that you have set or your current location. Digital technology is also changing the way the world sees us and the way we see other parts of the world. The Arab Spring came alive on social media networks and people around the world followed the apprehension of one of the Boston Marathon bombing suspects in real time. Investigators are looking at social media sites of the two suspects to build a case. This guy has two felony warrants uh, for uh, two counts of lewd molestation and we have 22,456 people have saw this post. Tulsa Police Spokesman Leland Ashley says Facebook posts reach people who don't watch TV or read a newspaper, but get information on the internet or through their smartphones. He says a suspect's phone is often a key piece of evidence in a case. Say we're looking at a certain person and we bring them in and there's, always, there's already comments about that crime in their phone. Ashley says social networks also help in complicated gang violence cases. Our gang investigators, anytime they have a shooting, anything gang related type of violence, use the first place they go to is social media. Because what you'll find out, a lot of these individuals like to brag about what they've done. Accessing the world through your phone keeps getting easier and more interactive, 
like talking to your phone to get information. Siri, I'm hungry. I found 15 restaurants. 14 of them are fairly close to you. The internet giant Google is testing Google Glasses and will be selling them commercially within a year or so. It's like wearing a computer or a smartphone. Digital information is right in front of a user's eye. The device can record what they see and share it in real time. So what's next? I think one day we won't even be wearing glasses. There'll be contact lenses that we pop in our eye. And the reason I say that is because they already exist. That technology already exists and it's already being used and tested. Tolson Bill Handy is an expert in social media and emerging technology. He says our phones will become personal assistants. And then it would know that I hadn't yet stopped on the turnpike to have lunch. And so it, the system would automatically say to me, hey, look, you know, your, your 3.30 got canceled. Um, would you like to pick up lunch? And I might say, no, I'll eat when I get back. And it would say, wonderful, um, your wife, who's also on the network, is busy for dinner this evening, um, but your friend, Matt, is not. It was four decades ago the futuristic Jetsons cartoon captured an unimaginable high-tech life. Judy Jetson took video calls from her mother. George flew into work. Makes you wonder about the future, doesn't it?